some miracles of the miraculous icon found at the monastery of St. Nicholas on the island of Andros, Greece. This is the monastery, the church, the main church is in the middle. You can see the top of it. And these are the little sachets of cotton filled with myrrh that you see on the left hand side of the copy of the icon of the root of Jesse. The root of Jesse, Jesse being the uh, father of David, who became King David of Israel, who wrote the Psalms. And the, of course, the descendant of David was the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Virgin Mary, Saint Mary. On the narthex of the church, just before you go into the main part of the church, you have a wall. And on the right hand side of the wall, you have this icon of our Virgin Mother. It's a very old mural. This church, the icon itself, the Merg streaming icon, is dated around 800 AD. And this monastery, they say, is from about that time. This mural is very old. And every time we go to the monastery to get some more holy myrrh, because we give it to people who are sick to be cured, we've seen tremendous cures, as I'll tell you in this video. Um, we see the icon of the Mother of God in the narthex, in the beginning of the church. Uh, she cries. Sometimes her eyes are have triple black circles under them. Other times she's about to cry. This time that we went, she had tears welling in her eyes. By the time we came out from our prayers, the tears had uh, streamed down her, uh, her cheeks, and it was terrible to see. It's as if she was a real person. On the right hand side is an icon, just like this one, an icon of Christ. I did not take pictures of that, but at times when we have gone for a pilgrimage to this monastery, one time I saw that Christ's face was black up to his neck, under his cheek, under his chin. And I asked one of the monks there what what, what they did to the to the face of Christ. He said, we don't so we don't do anything to the icon. We never ever touch the icons. And now this icon here, you see it's a little bit, uh, there's a green part on Christ's face. It's because there's a glass in front of it, protective glass from floor to ceiling, so that nobody touches the icons. And there's something reflecting from behind me onto Christ's face. So I just wanted to recount some of the miracles that we have seen because one of the ladies, one person who uh, saw my comment on Facebook without her seeing the video, uh, gave me, asked me a question. And uh, I had to recall to her a few of the videos that I saw, that I knew of because she asked me, what kind of uh, miracles have you seen? So I'd like to recount them here for you. Uh, when she heard me use the word mirror, she thought it was just plain myrrh that we get from something. Some, she uh, referred to Boswellia Sacra, which um, I use as an incense, uh, to burn incense. And Boswellia Sacra is known from the ancient times it was used as incense, and uh, it was the Boswellia Sacra that the three wise men brought as gifts to our Lord Jesus Christ for his birth. They brought frankincense, which was the Boswellia Sacra, um, gold, and myrrh. Uh, this is the myrrh that uh, uh, the lady that asked, that conversed with me through Facebook, asked me about. Now, this is not regular myrrh. This is the what is coming from the holy icon is holy myrrh. We have specific icons that are touched by the Holy Spirit. This is Christian doctrine. Not all icons are the same. Some are actually touched by the Holy Spirit, by God himself. And they are uh, a blessing for us because they give healing miracles. Now we go and collect this holy myrrh that streams from the icon and um, it's a gift to mankind because it shows us how close God is to us and loves us and cares for us. It goes without saying that with every single miracle 
that takes place, they never go to waste. People uh, become very faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only the people that are healed, but all the people of their family and friends around them who, who, who learn of this miracle. And now, um, my answer to this lady, uh, I, I did confirm to her, of course, that Boswellia Sacra was used in ancient civilizations and its oil was known to even cure cancer at those times. And we use Boswellia Sacra as incense, which is good for clearing the lungs, etc. That's what it was used for in the olden times. But this myrrh I speak of in this video is holy myrrh that is touched by the Holy Spirit of God, Christ. And it's given to us, it's giving us amazing healing miracles for illness of people we personally know of today that doctors could not cure. Uh, then she says, I need to go back and view that video again. What kind of ailments in people has it healed? And uh, I go to a quick brief. The abbot refuses to publish books reporting of all the healings because he doesn't want to be accused of being a um, charlatan or anything. And he has given us the uh, order to, by word of mouth, tell of the healings and the miracles. So that's what I'm doing here for you now. Uh, each one of us that has given this uh, sachet of myrrh has his own group of healing stories that uh, uh, he can pass on to other people. And, and this is what I'm doing now for you. So the abbot refused to publish books reporting all the healings. He said, you tell people, everybody, each of you tell people. Now, I learned of this icon from a person at my church because he saw that I was distraught. He said, what's wrong with you? I said, I'm thinking about a little girl four-year-old girl has, who's very sick and I'm, I'm so so sad for her and he says uh, well uh, I'll give you some holy myrrh from this uh, miraculous icon from our Lord Jesus Christ our mother, the mother of God because I personally have given it to many people and I've, we've seen tremendous miracles so um, I went to the monastery it was winter time I got some holy myrrh for this four-year-old girl who was suffering from rheumatoid arthritis it was terrible to see her she had every single joint in her body i saw her fingers and her knees they were all bloated uh, at the joints and they were black and blue terrible um so uh, i went to get some holy myrrh with uh, for this girl that had rheumatoid arthritis who was taking 14 medications a day without any improvement the doctors finally stopped the medication since her kidneys and liver would be damaged from them. And now when she started taking the holy myrrh that I got for her from the uh, monastery, she took it, we put a little bit of this cotton, we tear a little bit off from the cotton here and we put it in some holy water that we get from our church. We don't put the whole swab in there. And we put it in, it, in some holy water and it's in a bottle and she drinks a few drops of the holy water which is infused with the myrrh every single day. And in about three or four days, she was cured. And the doctors, well, anyway, let me go on with my description. Uh, when she started taking the holy myrrh with holy water, she was immediately healed. Also, I first gave it to a woman with severe depression. Uh, that's because before I went to the little girl, I had some and I, from the sachet, I gave it to another woman. That's what God does. He. Uh, sh he knows that we have the sachet and he allow he leads us he guides us as to who to give it to so I gave it to a woman with severe depression she was at the hospital I went to visit her at the hospital she was up in a, on a high floor with windows that do not open because they're afraid that uh, people will uh, um, you know could, uh, have an idea of taking their lives anyway she uh, took it she took the holy myrrh um, she drank it. She left the hospital out of her own volition where they had kept her in a room without windows open so that she would not jump. And she went home and painted her lips. She felt so tremendously better, a changed person for the better, of course. And she went home and painted her whole living room and even the complicated, uh, convoluted designs uh, uh, of her fireplace. And she invited my husband and myself to be the first people to visit them on New Year so that's to bring them good luck and she would have God's blessings as the first people to enter their house on New Year's. It's a tradition that we have in Christian Orthodoxy. Also, 
Uh, there was another man who was sick, a man who was not faithful. He was a PhD, a chemical engineer, and he was also a Freemason who did not believe in Christ as being God, etc. Anyway, uh, when his wife heard of all these miracles that uh, I was recounting concerning what I saw, and, uh, you know, she was, uh, every Sunday after Holy Liturgy, we'd have coffee and we would talk about things like that, and she was aware of who I was giving them to, the woman with the depression, the girl with the rheumatoid arthritis. Anyway, her husband was suffering from uh, severe uh, last stage of cancer of the colon, and he was to have surgery in three days. So this was Sunday. Okay, So Tuesday he was to have surgery. She says, come to the house, give him some holy myrrh. Uh, so I went home, got some holy myrrh, and she had holy uh, water at the house anyway. And we gave him the holy myrrh. So this was Sunday, and he was to have the operation on Tuesday. He never attended church, obviously. Now, his wife was at church every day on Sundays, of course, every Sunday. Now, uh, so he had the operation on Tuesday. On the following Sunday, he was at church standing in front of the icon close to Jesus Christ, looking at him reverently and adoringly as if he and Christ were the only two people on earth. I would look at him and, and feel jealous of saying, something has happened to this man. He's a totally faithful man. Um, so anyway, after the Holy Liturgy was over, over, I asked his wife, I said, what happened to your husband? Why is he here? And he's standing the whole time, three hours. She said, well, what can I do? I couldn't keep him away. And then she says, I want you to take me to the island of Andros because I want to say thank you because God gave us a miracle with my husband. So she told us on the way back what had happened. They had operated on him. The doctors saw that everything was uh, destroyed, uh, dissolved, and they just closed him back up. The doctor, the surgeon, came out to his wife and said, look, there's a phone. Go call your lawyer. Go call your insurance guy. Your husband has two weeks, two months to live. That's it. We didn't even operate on him. We just closed him back up again. We did take a sample for microbiology for a di biopsy, and we sent it to, for biopsy, as we were supposed to do. So the biopsy came back totally clean. The man had to take another 3,000 examinations, and they found that he was totally cured. There was nothing wrong with him. He lived another 12 years after that. He died at the age of like 87 or something. A totally faithful man uh, telling everybody about how Christ cure him, cured him. So that was, an, that was another miracle. There was other small miracles as well. A, a girl from, um, was, it, was it Denmark or was it Holland? I think it was Holland or Belgium. Anyway, uh, what, a, a girl, a 24 year old girl, I think it was Holland from Holland that was suffering from, she was Protestant. She was suffering from uh, brain cancer and they could not, they were, she was, you know, they were doing some kind of laser treatments on her. They could not operate where it was. And um, one of the friends of her father was distraught and I saw him, I said, what's the matter? He said, so-and-so, my friend has five children. His daughter has brain cancer. She's a beautiful girl, 24 years old. I gave him the holy myrrh. Uh, he took it to her and he would tell me her, uh, as months went on, he would tell me her uh, progress. And she was cured. She was cured. She came uh, to Greece with her fiance at that time. She was, you know, the guy who was in love with her. Uh, and. Uh, we told her about the Holy Myrrh, and uh, of course, God cured her. Uh, that was a very, you know, uh, the thing is, as, as time went on, to people that I had to give the Holy Myrrh to, I noticed that the situations of illnesses were worse, getting worse and worse and worse to every individual I was giving it to. And I was saying, my Lord, how are they going to be cured? How are they going to be cured? It's as if he was saying, you do your best and I'll do the rest. You just give it and I'll do the cure. And that's what exactly was happening. Now, uh, okay, so we saw many miracles. <laughs> Another woman from breast can Oh yes, I first gave it to a, a poor woman that was coming to our church every Sunday for alms. And she had breast cancer. She was the mother of 
three children, and she even had doctor's papers that she was, you know, she looked terribly uh, pale and she was thin, you know. She was like, she had no strength. And um, we would help her, we would, you know, give her food and clothing. So I also gave her, she was one of the first people I gave the Holy Mirror to. Um, and uh, this was a Sunday afternoon, Sunday. And she came back the winter time. And she came back the next Sunday and it was freezing. We were, we were outside uh, selling little things for the, you know, to gather money for the church, uh, for the poor. And she came, she had no coat. She was wearing a thick sweater. And she came and I said, oh, Athanasia, why are you here? She said, I came back. She had rosy cheeks. Her, she was standing with fortitude and, and health and joy and peace. And she said, I came back to say thank you because I'm cured. And I, I'm sorry, but I have to say, I, it, as she was saying this to me, uh, there were all these women around the little table that we were sending, selling our religious things um, uh, for them to get. Uh, they heard her say this and they wouldn't leave. I said, well, wait until the ladies leave and then you could tell me the story. Well, they, they didn't leave because they wanted to hear her story. And um, she said, I took, you know, this was Sunday. I took the Holy Myrrh and by Wednesday, while I was sleeping, as we said, she had breast cancer, something happened and there was blood and pus coming out of my body from where I had the cancer, you know, from the breast that I had the cancer. And I had, there was blood and liquid and, uh, you know, pus coming out and I called the doctor. I said, look, there's blood and pus coming out of my body where I have the problem. He said, he started, he had to scream, screaming with joy. He says, oh, that's fantastic. It's going out, it's going out. And then she went to get examined and she had nothing. So she came the next Sunday to tell us thank you. And it was from the Holy Mirror. And I had a, I'm sorry, God forgive me. I had a problem to believe her because this was the beginning, you know, when I was seeing all this, these miracles and the ladies were there. I said, let's open up the Holy Bible at random to see what our Lord Jesus Christ tells us. And the passage that fell was that something like this in brief. I listen to the words of my little children when they call on me for help. And I immediately come down to help them. That, that was a brief of, their, of, of what the passage said to us. He listens to our words, our simple words for help, for cry of help. And he comes to help us. That was the passage that came. Okay, so now the original uh, huge miracle uh, having to do with the Holy Myrrh um, was having to do with the resurrection of a little girl who drowned, drowned in her pool. Um, the first miracle we heard of was the resurrection of a little girl who drowned in her family pool. Her parents, both physicians, they were doctors. Important you remember the fact that both her parents were doctors. Uh, they were looking for her little child and they couldn't find her. And they're saying, where's our daughter? Where's the girl? Where does it call her Maria for, for sure? And they were looking for Maria. They couldn't find her. Well, they found her four hours later at the bottom of their pool, drowned. The mother took the dead body of her seven-year-old daughter and placed it on the dining room table and then ran to the convent of Suroti outside of Thessaloniki, Greece, to tell the abbots there about this event. Uh, the, uh, uh, the convent of Suroti is where we have the uh, tomb of our new saint of Saint Paisius, the uh, holy of the holy mountain. His tomb is found there, um, and also holy relics of uh, Saint Arsenius of Cappadocia. So the mother ran to the uh, convent and spoke to the abbots. Uh, about the death of the drowning of her daughter and um, the abbess gave the mother of the girl a white sheet that was used to wrap the holy miraculous mer streaming icon of the root of jesse at the feast day of july 2nd and um, this uh, this sheet was placed around the holy icon to carry the icon around the monastery grounds during the litany of the icon 
uh, the abbess held it, uh, held, uh, was given the sheet. This is the sheet that was given to the mother of the dead girl. The abbess gave the sheet to the, she said, what can I do for you if I have nothing to do for you? I can't do anything. Uh, but the only thing I could do is give you a sheet to place over your, your daughter, your daughter's body. So this is the sheet that um, was given to the mother of the dead girl. The mother took the sheet that had wrapped the miraculous mer streaming icon and placed it on the body of her dead daughter. Now, in the meantime, uh, we must confirm that the daughter was pronounced dead by the coroner. The family, of course, even the, even the parents knew that she was dead. As we, as we said before, they were both doctors and knew that she was well dead for hours. In the meantime, uh, the family was preparing for a funeral, uh, the, the coroner, uh, but, 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 uh, but the mother came back with a sheet that uh, had held the holy icon, the root of Jezzy, and she placed this sheet on her daughter's body. The little girl then immediately set up, resurrected, and she was examined by all the doctors who found that she had absolutely no brain damage. This was the first miracle that I heard of personally. This holy mirror had resurrected a person, a daughter of two doctors, after she was dead for over a good seven hours. As we said, with no, uh, no, da no bodily damage, no brain damage, nothing. So these are some of the miracles that we have seen. I personally, all these, you know, before we talk about the resurrection of the little girl, but all the other miracles, I was uh, honored enough to be a witness for uh, so God is alive Christ is alive and he's with us always so this is uh, I also the I will leave a link below for you so that you can watch the video of the pilgrimage to Andros so that you can see the, the location and some of the things that we did when we went to the pilgrimage there the healing miracles from the mer streaming icon of St. Nicholas Andros, Greece. God bless you. Thank you.